moment, there's certainly an increasing interest in electronic music, music that is produced by electronic oscillators. Think of a sound, now make it. Yes! Oh my God! <laughs> There's no doubt that electronic dance music, more commonly known as EDM, has made its debut in the mainstream world of music. EDM has recently exploded with popularity expanding farther than just the limits of the music world. Advertisements, TV commercials, radio ads. It seems like now in the current times, it's hard to escape the catchy, upbeat, rhythmic tones heard in our everyday lives. Starting from underground venues known by few, to some of the largest stages, with over 100,000 people in attendance, electronic dance music has grown exponentially over the last decade. Artists like Tiesto, Dead Mouse, and Skrillex are now household names adored by millions. Nowadays, anyone with a laptop and little mixing equipment has the potential to make it big by mixing something no one has ever heard before. My generation came up with computers and everything, so it's something we're very familiar with. And it's great to have something that you're familiar with to utilize to get yourself out there. But on the other hand of that, it's making it seem a bit too easy, I guess, you know, and people are looking at the wrong aspects creat creatively, you know. Um, so a lot of soul is lost, and a lot of context is lost in the art too, like understanding where things come from. But the ability to compose music once wasn't always this easy. The most unique quality about EDM is that it is revolutionized by technology and diversity. Recent advances in technology has played a giant role in the production of this high-energy genre. Over the past several decades, the world has experienced a technological revolution resulting in advances in machinery, medicine, as well as music. It wasn't until the late 50s where engineers could generate pure tones or individual notes through a computer. These computers at the time were made up of thousand vacuum tubes and programming some of the simplest music sequences could take hours. Later, these engineers would create a smaller, more efficient way to produce music through machines called synthesizers. First, the most popular synthesizers was called the VCS-3. This synthesizer was popular amongst experimental musicians at the time and was appealing for its small transportable size. In the 60s and 70s, the VCS-3 helped produce some of the first house and disco albums. It was even recorded that Pink Floyd used the VCS-3 on their influential album, The Dark Side of the Moon. The VCS-3 and other synthesizers were the primary source of producing music until the late 80s when computers became more adaptable and could generate sound. Since then, listening, producing, and accessing music has become more efficient. Not only was electronic music created from technology, but it was also created by diversity. The history of the formation of electronic dance music started in its birthplace of two key American cities, Chicago and Detroit. Chicago at the time was a thriving city. Overflowing with diversity, it had a very strong Latino and African American community. And thanks to the ever-expanding gay rights movement, the gay and lesbian population was rapidly increasing. This meant that a surge of new underground nightclubs were forming. Disco dance music was upbeat and irresistible to dance to. Disco dance music uh, it was really danceable R&B music that we were dancing to. And it wasn't until Saturday Night Fever came along that it exploded and every goomba in the, you know, the suburbs start dancing. If people can dance together, they can live together. And that's why it was so important to bring all kinds of people black, white, straight, and gay together with music. Eventually, word spread of this new upcoming music in Chicago. 
talk of diversity and acceptance was greatly needed in the streets of Detroit. In the late 80s, Detroit was faced with the fall of the auto industry. Many jobs were lost, and Detroit was being described as a desert wasteland. The once industrial machine fell apart and only left the impoverished. The majority of the population felt betrayed and was left a waste away. But it was this sense of loss that fueled artists like Derek Bay and Carl Craig to find the sonic landscape of techno. During this incredible revolution, many of the abandoned industrial factories became the breeding grounds for this type of music. All these factors became now what we know as techno. Techno is about soul. It's about from deep inside yourself. And the same type of, of soul that, that has gone into blues. It's just that techno is done with electronic music or electronic instruments instead of guitars. Techno and disco are just a few genres labeled under the large, evolving category that is electronic music. During the early 80s, disco and house set down the foundations and gave birth to countless musical genres such as Eurodance, UK Garage, and started the progressive moment of electronic dance music. Their subdivisions include breakbeat, downtempo, hardcore, electronic acoustic, and electronic rock. On the other side, we can note that techno has formulated some of the most popular electronic music heard today, including drum and bass, along with trance. We can also note that a large number of genre of techno was born in Europe, such as electronica, ambient, electro, and industrial techno. When taking a step back, we can see that there are even subdivisions that can differentiate electronic music even further. This also gives a good idea of how far electronic music has come. Now we're left to ask ourselves where EDM will go. Currently, in 2013, electronic dance concerts, or raves, bring in the biggest numbers compared to all the other categories of music. I believe this is reflected on EDM's popularity among our generation. One of the largest concerts in the world is the Electric Daisy Carnival. Started in 2002, sponsored by Insomniac Incorporated, EDC has toured over 12 American cities and has displayed over 300 DJs in its time. Last year's event was hosted in Las Vegas and the attendance of a three-day crowd count was more than 215,000 people. Past generations can look down upon us, but we are young, free-spirited individuals that have found a way to express ourselves through the music we listen to. Throughout history, isn't that how it's always been? We grew up in a world that obsesses about beauty and achieving perfection, but when will it be socially acceptable for us to throw those ideals out the window? Well, maybe, just for one night, at one concert, we can change that way of unreasonably thinking. Free of all judgment and standards, Full of peace, unity, diversity, and respect, we surround ourselves with people that share the same attitude to experience something greater than we have ever experienced before.